Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Shahid Latif, Associate Professor at Department of Computer Science, Sarhad University, Peshawar. Today we will start lecture number 3 of our course Computer Architecture. Course code for Computer Architecture course is CS252. This course is offered for BTEC Electrical and Electronics program while this course is a 3-0 credit hour course. Today we will start chapter number 2 of our course book. The title of chapter number 2 is Computer Evolution and Performance. Before starting our chapter number 2 and lecture number 3 of Computer Architecture course, Let's have a look on the previous two lectures, lecture number one and lecture number two. In lecture number one, we discuss our course and prerequisite required for this course. We learned that three basic courses are required as a prerequisite for this course, including digital logic design, the basic electronics and microprocessor architecture and assembly language. Then we discuss some important topics from these prerequisite courses. We start our lecture number one with number systems. We know that there are four very common number systems that is binary number system, octal number system, decimal number system and hexadecimal number system we discuss one by one all these four number systems then after discussing the number system we discuss various data formats used in computer system such as american standard code for information interchange binary coded decimal, unsigned integers, and signed integers. We discuss microprocessor architecture in general and specifically 8086 architecture. After discussing the microprocessor architecture, we discussed that what type of memory memory systems are used in computer system and how these memory can be managed like how many address lines are required for each memory location and what is addressable memory how we can find that how much addressable memory is required for a computer system. Similarly, we discussed instruction set. Instructions are commands used by a specific computer system. After discussing the instruction set, another important terminology known as addressing modes were also discussed for 8086 microprocessor. In lecture number two of our computer architecture course, we start chapter number one of our course book. Our course book, our textbook is Computer Architecture and Organization, authored by William Stallings. We are using eighth edition of that book. The chapter number one of our textbook is about introduction to computer architecture and organization. In lecture number two, we start our lecture with computer architecture and computer organization. After discussing the computer architecture and computer organization, we learn that what are the differences in computer architecture and computer organization. 
then we discuss the structure of a computer system and function of individual components of that structure and finally we discuss various operations performed by our computer system in this lecture we will discuss a brief history of computers we will learn that the history of computers is based on various generations like the first generation which is based on vacuum tubes in first generation we will discuss the most popular computer system termed as ENIAC the John one Newman machine also termed as IAS machine and the commercial computers these all three examples of computer systems are based on vacuum tubes after discussing the first generation of a computers we will learn this second generation of the computer system which is based on the transistors the semiconductor devices we will also learn the third generation based computer systems these computer systems are actually ICs means that integrated circuit based computers here we will also learn the more law finally in this lecture we will discuss the later generations here we will also learn the semiconductor memory and microprocessors recommended books for this course include computer organization and architecture authored by william stallings we are using the 8th edition if you have any latest edition it is also acceptable remember that majority contents of this lecture are taken from this computer organization and architecture book however two other books computer system architecture authored by morris mano and computer architecture and organization authored by john p hayes are also used for preparing this lecture so starting with the first generation of computer system which are based on vacuum tubes any ek the electronic numerical integrator and computer is the world's first general purpose electronic digital computer this computer was invented by john eckert and john mockley which are student and professor at university of pennsylvania this computer system was started in 1943 it was needed during world war 2 it was actually needed for development of firing tables for determining the range and trajectory tables or for developing the range and trajectory tables for new weapons that computer system was completed in 1946 it was too late for the war effort but it used until 1955 some other details of any ek system were such that that computer system was decimal computer system not binary means that it were using decimal digits instead of binary bits memory of that computer system were made of 20 accumulators each of 10 digits size that computer systems was programmed manually 
using switches through plugging and unplugging cables. It was containing 18,000 vacuum tubes. Weight of this computer system was about 30 tons and it was occupying 1500 square feet. It was a very high consuming project and approximately 140 kilowatt power was consumed by that computer system. This computer system was capable of doing 5000 additions per second. John Von Neumann machine. This machine was first store program concept based machine. It was invented by John Von Neumann, a mathematician. The aim behind the invention of this machine was that the entering and altering of programs in any egg was extremely tedious so it was needed that a stored program concept must be used main memory was used for storing programs and data in this computer system the ALU of that computer system was operating on binary data. The control unit of that computer system was used for interpreting the instructions from memory and executing. The IO equipment was operated by the control unit. This computer system was also referred as IAS computer. That computer system was also started in 1946, but it was not completed until 1952. However, prototype of all subsequent general purpose computers means that that computer system were used as a prototype of all the upcoming generations of general purpose computers. The basic architecture of one Newman machine is such that it has three main modules. The central module is known as a central processing unit which is made of two subunits the arithmetic logic unit and the program control unit its second main module is main memory while the third module of that computer system is IO equipment are simply IO module. Some further IS details include this computer system has 1000 storage location of 40 bits each and each 40 bits were termed as a word. It was a binary number based computer system and that binary numbers were used for data and instructions as a binary codes. The word which was of 40 bits may be equal to 220 bit instructions. Here you can see that in a drawigram it was using set of registers for storage in CPU. These registers include memory buffer registers, memory address registers, instruction register and instruction buffer register. Similarly program counter, the accumulator 
and multiplier quotient for operands and results. The structure of IAS system is such that it also contains three modules. The dotted lines are represented the central processing unit which is made of arithmetic logic unit and program control unit. Arithmetic logic unit has accumulator and multiplier quotient registers along with memory buffer register while it has logic circuits for arithmetical operations and logical operations. Similarly, the program control unit is made of several registers like instruction buffer register, instruction register, program counter, memory address register and some control circuits. The control circuits were used for generating the control signals. IAS computer system has also IO module and a main memory unit like any ECK machine. The commercial computers. In 1947, Eckerd and Mockley Computer Corporation introduced the first successful commercial machine Univac 1. Univac is the abbreviation of Universal Automatic Computers. This corporation was commissioned by U.S. Bureau of Census for 1950s calculations. This first commercial computer was intended for both scientific and commercial applications such as matrix algebraic computation, the statistical problems, premium billings for a life insurance company, and the logistic problems, etc., etc. Later, in 1950s, the second variation of Univac computers, that is Univac 2, was introduced. That computer was more faster than Univac 1, with a more memory. IBM was also a well-known manufacturer of commercial computers. IBM manufactured punch card processing equipment. In 1953, IBM launched their first computer system 701. It was a store program concept based computer system. While it was specifically designed for scientific applications and calculations. In 1955, IBM launched or released their second version or second model of computer systems that is 702. That computer system was suited for business application. IBM lead to 7000 series of computer systems. That 7000 series based computers were actually transistor based computer systems which were the second generation of a computer system second generation transistor based computer systems transistors are semiconductor devices they replaced vacuum tubes Transistors are smaller in size than vacuum tubes. They are cheaper and dissipate 
less heat than the vacuum tubes. These transistors are actually solid state devices. They are made of solid semiconductor materials and the most common material the semiconductor material for manufacturing the transistor is a silicon. The first transistor was invented in 1947 at Bell Laboratories by William Shockley. The computers which are based on transistors are known as second generation machines. The front runner companies which were producing the small transistor based machines include National Cash Register, NCR, Radio Corporation of America that is RCA and the IBM with 7000 series. Digital Equipment Corporation DEC were founded in 1957 and they produced their first machine PDP-1 which start the mini computer phenomena and it becomes so prominent in the third generation means that the idea of the mini computers started with PDP-1 computers by DEC corporation become very much prominent in the third generation systems. The third generation of computer system based on the integrated circuits. Actually a single self-contained transistor is called a discrete component and when these discrete components are combined in a predefined area then it becomes or it termed as integrated circuits. Throughout 1950s and even in early 1960s discrete components were used. Devices were composed of transistors, resistors, capacitors and various other components. Even the early second generation computers contained about 10,000 transistors. This figure grew to the hundred of thousands making the manufacture increasingly difficult. So the era of microelectronics was started with the invention of the integrated circuits. The era of microelectronics begins in 1958. As we know that a computer is made up of gates, the memory cells and the interconnections. So these all and everything can be manufactured on a semiconductor that is a single silicon wafer. Here is a brief history of generations of computers. The era of first generation based computer systems which were based on the vacuum tubes was from 1946 to 1957. In 1958 the second generation of computer which were transistor based computer systems is started and it was continued until 1964. In 1965, the third generation of computer systems were started and it was based on the 
integrated circuits. The small scale integration, which is also known as SSI, here up to 100 transistors or similar devices were implemented on a single chip. In a medium scale integration, that is MSI, there were a capacity of implementing 100 to 1000 devices on that particular chip. The fourth generation, which is based on LSI, that is large scale integration, here 1000 to 10,000 devices were implemented on a single chip. In fifth generation of computers, termed as a VLSI, that is very large scale integration, which started in 1978, we were able to implement up to 10 lakh or 1 million devices on a chip. While the 6th generation of a computer, which is known as a ULSI, termed as ultra large scale integration, we were able to implement more than 1 million devices on a single chip. What is Moore's law? As we know that the capacity or the density of components on a chip were increased from LSI to VLSI to ULSI and so on. The Jordan Moray who were the co-founder of Intel Corporation stated that the number of transistors on a chip will double every year. It was a prediction of Jordan Moray that the number of transistors on a chip will be double every year. Since 1970s, the development has shown a little slow. That is, number of transistors on a chip was doubled every 18 months instead of 12 months or a single year. However, it was very close to the prediction of Jordan Moray. There are some consequences of Moray's law. We see that cost of a chip has remained almost unchanged. The higher packing density means shorter electrical paths which gives us higher performance. Similarly, the smaller sizes gives us increased flexibility. The reduced power consumption also reduces the cooling requirements. Similarly, fever interconnections increases reliability. These five are the sequences of the Moore's law. Here in this figure, you can see that the solid line is representing the actual growth in CPU transistor count are simply the transistors per chip. which is approximately linear shown by the dotted line. 
the IBM 360 series. In 1964, IBM launched their new series which replaced the 7000 series. It was the first planned family of computers. The model of the series were 30, 40, 50, 65 and 75 and so on. The characteristics of this family include that these computer system or the model of this computer series, uh, this computer family were using similar or identical instruction sets. These models of 360 series were using similar or identical operating system. The speed of the model is increased from 30 to 75. The increasing number of IO ports going from lower to higher family members that is from 30 to 75. Similarly, the size of memory were increasing going from lower to higher family members. The cost of these systems were also increased. This family of computers were using multiplexed switch structure. In 1964, DEC Corporation introduced their first mini computer which was avoiding the requirement or the need of air conditioned room. It was small enough to sit on a lab bench. The price of PDP-8 computer was about $16,000 which were several hundred of thousand times for IBM 360 computer system means that it was a very expensive as compared to IBM 360 computer system. The bus structure were used for the first time in DEC PDP-8 instead of central switch archi architecture which were used in IBM 360 series. The omnibus used in this computer system were consisting of 96 signal paths. It was carrying control, data and address signals. The bus structure of the DAC PDP-8 computer system was such that it were using the omnibus which were used for carrying the control data and address signals or bits and every module of that computer system was connected with the omnibus now the later generations as discussed previously when we were discussing the generation of computers, we discussed the 4th, 5th and 6th generation based computer system. Remember that along with other technological advancements, the increasing density of computers on chip result in semiconductor memory and the microprocessor. What is a semiconductor memory? In 1950 and 1960s, computer memories were single ring or core based memories. 
they were magnetic memories they were expensive and bulky while they were destructive read out based memories destructive read means you have to erase to read and then restore in 1970s fairchild was the first capacious semiconductor memory manufacturer they introduced a single chip of size equal to single core that was enabled to hold 256 bits it was non destructive it was much faster than the core memories while the capacity of that memories approximately doubles each year now the microprocessor the microprocessor of intel corporation in 1971 the intel corporation introduced their first microprocessor 4004 here in this microprocessor all the cpu components were on a single chip and it was a 4 bit microprocessor 4004 microprocessor was followed by 8008 in 1972 it was a 8 bit microprocessor oh, that's why its complexity was twice more than 4004 these both processors 4004 and 8008 were designed for some specific applications similarly in 1974 intel release 8080 microprocessor it was an 8 bit microprocessor but it was the intel's first general purpose microprocessor it was introduced with larger instruction set and addressing capabilities the evolutions of intel microprocessor in these three four tables the intel microprocessors and the evolution of these microprocessor is listed in table number a the microprocessor released in 1970s and some of their characteristic has been listed similarly in part b of that table the microprocessor released in 1980s are listed with their some features and characteristics in part c of the table the microprocessor in released by intel corporation in 1990s are listed along with their characteristic while section d of that table is representing the intel microprocessors along with their characteristics thank you very much that is all for today we will discuss the remaining topics of chapter number 2 in lecture number 4 if you have any query or question feel free to contact 